The philosopher Schopenhauer said that when people are presented with the truth, it is initially ridiculed, then it is violently and vehemently opposed, and then the third phase is that it becomes accepted as self-evident. So what I'd like to present to you today is when we're looking at the raising of Lazarus from the dead is to look at it in a different way. That when we tap into an understanding of how the Jewish people wrote those Gospels, and let's be clear, the Gospels were written by Jewish people in Aramaic, and then later it got translated into the Greek and became dualistic and then taken as literal. So what I'd like to do is give you a couple examples to make my point. That in the Gospel of St. John, you could see where he sort of spoofs on people who take things literally. You can recall the story of Nicodemus who meets Jesus at night and that during that encounter, Jesus says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus responds, Can a grown man enter his mother's womb a second time? Now, we all know that obviously that can't be. Nicodemus is hearing Jesus' words of being born again, and he's hearing it literally. Another example of this is when Jesus meets the Samaritan woman at the well, and Jesus says to this woman, If you drank from the water that I will give you, I want to give you living water. And if you drink from that living water, you will never thirst again. And the woman says to Jesus, man, you don't even have a bucket. How are you going to give me this water? But I want some of that water because I'm really sick and tired of having to go to the well all the time to quench my thirst. Again, the woman is not understanding the words of Jesus, that living water is referring to the life-giving spirit of the living God. Another way that John would write, the author of John would write, is through the use of exaggeration. And when he would exaggerate, it was immediately the audience of the Jewish people would know that this is not a literal story. It would be comparable when we start a story with once upon a time. Once we hear that, we know that what we're about to hear is not literal. The rabbit and the turtle did not historically have a race, but we all understand the point of the story. So we hear the story of Jesus changing water into wine. Jesus takes six cisterns, six jugs, And those contain 30 gallons of water. He takes six of them and transforms it into wine. Now that's 180 gallons of wine. Now maybe that would be enough for some of the parties that you and I have gone to, or weddings. But it's an exaggeration, 180 gallons of wine. And also... He didn't transform the water into wine, and the wine was not yellowtail. It was a $100 bottle of Joseph Phelps. It was excellent, excellent wine. So these are, again, exaggerated stories. The man is born blind. He doesn't just, just became blind. He was blind from birth, and Jesus gives him sight. The paralytic man, he was paralyzed for 38 years, And then he is given back his ability to walk. These are exaggerated stories in the Gospel of John, and it would be clearly understood that this is not literal history. In today's Gospel passage, we hear the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And we hear that Lazarus was dead for four days. That is stressed several times in the passage His body is decaying. Martha says to Jesus that there is going to be a severe odor. And so 
this is not just somebody who just recently died. He has been dead for four days and his body is corrupting. Again, it's an exaggeration. Even when you think of the story where Lazarus is wrapped up in a burial cloth. He is wrapped up from head to toe. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. Well, how is Lazarus going to come forth? Is he going to hop up out of the grave, out of the tomb? Unbind him, Jesus says. I mean, you could, you could see that there's, there's no reality. There can be no actual reality to the story. There's something far more powerful going on than literally raising Lazarus from the dead. Another interesting uh, point to make when taking the story literally, that if it happened literally, why is it only in the Gospel of John? Why doesn't Paul mention it in any of his writings? Why isn't it written in any of the synoptic Gospels? If it wasn't for John's Gospel, we would not even hear of the story of raising Lazarus from the dead. Pretty powerful story if it occurred in literal history. But if we take it literally, we, we miss the power and the majesty of the scripture. Lazarus is bound up. He's confined. And we hear several times, and Jesus loved Lazarus. And Jesus wept over the death of Lazarus. See how much he loved him is stated. That over and over again, we hear it's this love of Jesus that raises Lazarus, that frees him from that which binds him up, frees him from that which causes him to not be who he really is, raises him to a new level of being, a new way of consciousness, a new way of seeing and experiencing life. And it comes from the love that Christ had for Lazarus. This is the powerful point of the story. The point of the story is to ask ourselves today, where are we bound up? Where are we living in a limitation? Perhaps it's a poor self-esteem. Perhaps we're bound up by holding on to a hurt or a betrayal, a broken heart from the past, and we're holding on to it, and it's causing us to not be alive, to not rise above the things that have happened to us. Jesus Christ is telling us today in this gospel passage, you are called to allow the love of Jesus into your mind and into your heart to raise you to a new level of being, to free you from what binds you, to come alive, and to live one of the most powerful lines in all of Scripture, I have come that you may have life in all of its abundance.